Hi everyone, Felix here, Advanced Clinical Practitioner with Eden Clinic. Just a quick video about dihydrotestosterone, aka DHT. So, what is it? Well, DHT is the most potent hormone amongst the androgens and is considered a pure androgen as it can't be converted into estrogen. It's formed primarily in peripheral tissues of the body where it exerts its effects. Testosterone is converted to DHT by the action of 5-alpha reductase enzyme at these target tissues. This isolated synthesis at a specific target tissue level makes DHT primarily a paracrine hormone. So what's a paracrine hormone then? Well, paracrine hormones are where the hormone acts locally by diffusing from its source to the target cells in the nearby vicinity. Conversely, endocrine hormones broadcast their chemical message over long range through the body via the blood and lymphatic circulation systems. Then of course there are autocrine hormones whose chemical message initiates action within the cell that produced it. So what does DHT do? Well, DHT being a steroid hormone is primarily synthesized in the, in the liver as part of the steroidogenesis cascade, with only small amounts, relatively speaking, being present in the systemic circulation. Its main responsibilities lie within sexual differentiation during fetal development. However, it also has a role with libido, development of myocytes or muscle tissue more commonly known as, and the regulation of body and facial hair growth. Also, of course, there's an association with male pattern baldness. So that's the big one, isn't it? Hair loss. As DHT has a role at a tissue specific level, it's worth talking about why that is. So DHT has a higher binding affinity than other steroidal hormones to the androgen receptor. Where there's an increased density of the androgen receptor, you'll see more emphasized effects on a tissue level. It just so happens that there's a large density of the androgen receptor in the scalp. It's important to note, though, that male pattern baldness is largely genetic, um, but DHT can have an impact on it if you have that genetic polymorphism. Although there are medications that are able to mediate DHT, such as finasteride and dutasteride, these medications work through 5-alpha reductase inhibition and also by inhibiting the hair follicle miniaturization process. So are there side effects if you were to take those medicines then? Well, yeah, it's well documented with finasteride in particular that it can cause cases of nasty side effects that tend to be centered around psychiatric and reproductive health dysfunction. So in real terms, that could translate to depressive disorder, erectile dysfunction, reduced libido, decreased ejaculate volume even. And this has been both studied in the literature and anecdotally been observed with such frequency that the term post finasteride syndrome has been coined. So what about medications then? Are there medications that are associated with DHT? Well, yes, there are. There's a particularly popular one called Mesterolone, or otherwise known by the brand name Proviron. And this is actually a DHT derivative steroid that has its uses clinically in the manipulation of DHT in certain clinical scenarios. However, essentially when it's not used in an appropriate manner, it can be counterproductive because it can cause displacement of bound testosterone from SHBG and thus increase free T and DHT. However, the cost of this is that your SHBG can reduce substantially and we need to remember that SHBG is extremely important and is a, and a healthy level of SHBG is actually a positive health marker. And SHBG has other important roles, which we'll discuss in another video. If you liked this video, guys, please remember to hit like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of our future uploads. I'll see you in the next one.